Hey, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Today, we've got another history boot for you. We know that y'all like these old history boots. This one is a replica, but it is a World War II, uh, the Type 2 of like they call it the M42, just the service boot that was issued when you came into the Army during World War II. Now, this pair looks to be in good shape, but the gentleman that sent them in wants to have them completely redone, and that's what we are going to do. So, without further ado, let's get to this pair of boots. As we mentioned, this is the M42, uh, just regular old service boot that was issued during World War II, U.S. Army. And um, just want to you know, say again, this is, this is a replica. So we want to see how are these constructed compared to what originals or what I think originals would be made like. And some of you history people out there, um, you're going to have to jump in here. And if I say something wrong, let us know because I'm really curious. So let's uh, deconstruct this thing. As you can see, um, it's got a thick rubber half sole on top of a full thickness leather outsole, uh, then straight to the welt with a one piece, well, pretty much a one piece, um, very thick. It's like, that's almost like a 18 to 20 iron top lift on top of one little thin piece of leather. Uh, I did want to mention also, because some of y'all are going to wonder and be like, well, why, is he, why is he even having this done? It's the insole. The gentleman who owns this, I don't know if he got the second hand, but the insole is leather and he, they're uncomfortable uh, if you don't have them molded to your foot. So he's going to have the insole and to do that, we got to take the rest of it apart. All right, oh, that's interesting. So here's that top part. It had a double stitch going around. When I took it off though, I expected a little bit more resistance on these stitches on the inside, but would flip it over, they're faux. So they weren't actually going through the insole. Now I, I don't know if that is how the originals were or if that's just a um, reproduction thing, but I can't imagine military boots, everything was built for a purpose and these things were built to last. So I would assume that on the originals, this would have been stitched to the actual leather sole. And then this part would have been stitched all the way through to the welt. So um, if you do know, if you've ever seen an original with this thing off, let me know. All right, so we got some sheet cork. Yep, and there's no gimming. This was um, split and carved into the actual insole, which would have been period correct at that time. And let's get this thing off and see what's underneath. Now this is interesting. So on a lot of shoes, especially mass produced shoes, uh, when this is folded over during the lasting process, they'll get little tacks and go around. You've seen it in our other videos a hundred times. This actually is stitched like kind of like a whip stitch and it's going carved into the insole. So underneath here and then into the insole and just pops out and they just whip it around. Normally, you don't see this on a mass produced shoe. Normally, you're going to see this on some sort of handmade shoe. Now, normally, like a bespoke shoe, it's actually going to continue the same um, saddle stitch going all the way around. But even the fact that this is just carved into the insole, that's pretty impressive. All 
right, so this is what the inside of the upper looks like. Now, I uh, went back, checked the email, and the gentleman actually mentioned that these were made by a company called At The Front. Um, they make World War II um, uniforms, equipment, boots, all that stuff for the reenacting hobby, uh, probably for films, movies, all that type of stuff. I don't know how authentic they are. I did look, go to their website, and I looked up these boots. And it said that they used to be made in the U.S. and that they that plant closed down, so they were looking abroad. The email said that these were made in Mexico, so I'm guessing that's where they've outsourced their production from. I, I don't know if these how authentic these things are. You historians out there, I, you know, I'm just showing you, and you let me know. It is one piece. It's unlined, um, rough side on the inside, and it's got some canvas up in the front, and. Um, does feel like the stiffener is just, yeah, it's sandwiched in between two layers. So the counter is actually has a lining inside of it. But there's what the inside looks like. Y'all tell me what you think. All right, now here's the insole. This is the reason why the guy wanted them. I mean, it looks like a roller coaster through here, just ripples and um, yeah, that wouldn't be the most comfortable thing on my foot. So we're gonna put a, a new fresh piece in and then he won't have this problem. So the insole is a thick piece of leather that's been tapered down on the edge and then channeled. And, uh, and one thing you do, I, well, I, I, wanna, I wanna show you is, look how far apart these stitch holes all are that hold on uh, the welt. Now you see this a lot in shoes that actually utilize uh, this form of construction where it's all leather, it's not canvas gimming. You see this in a lot of cowboy boots, high-end cowboy boots are still made this way. And uh, you see a lot of bespoke shoes, um, are, they're not you know, right on top of each other. And the reason for that is because even though the fibers of leather are really, are really tight, um, if you pull those stitches and the holes are really close together and you pull those stitches, you can actually rip through the leather and then it's pretty much shot. So um, if you look at a lot of bespoke shoes, they're not, you know, the stitches that actually hold the, the welt um, to the shoe, to the channel, they're not like right next to each other. Not like, you know, you see on top of the welt. They're, they're spaced a little apart. You see some of these mass produce shoes with canvas gimming and those holes are so close together. I don't have the last that this is made off of, so I have to trace the original insole. All right, so what I was using was just a channel knife and it's just got a very small slanted blade and you can back it in at different lengths and how deep you want it to cut and it'll cut an angle down into this. So you can kind of see, that's where the stitches will lie down inside.
All right, so you remember I talked about the stitching that went around, um, there's the original sole. You had this interior stitch line and it flipped it over and it turned out it was just a faux stitch. Uh, like I said, I tried to reach out to the company to see is that just a money saving thing, time saving thing? Was that on the originals or did it actually stitch all the way through the, uh, the outsole, the leather outsole? But since I don't know the answer, I'm not gonna mess with them. So I'm gonna put them back the way they were when I got them. So if you do know, like I said, let us know in the comments below, you history buffs out there. Let us know if you've ever seen one of those where this, you've seen the bottom and let us know if they were actually stitched to the leather. As you notice, we're using sheet cork in this one. The original had sheet cork and we were pressed for time. So that's why we got this. So, a little disclosure here. After I stitched the sole on and uh, we, we were starting to think about this, one thing we recognize is that the um, rubber soles that were sent and the rubber heels that were sent with this, they're oversized. So I'm thinking back in the day, these would have obviously been made for in different sizes, or at least, you know, it would cover several sizes. Um, don't know what this came with, but it is actually larger than the original that came on here. That's why we actually had to manipulate this to get the stitches in here and they're a little closer on. But you gotta remember, uh, these are mass produced for the war effort and they weren't very interested in, are the stitches pretty? So another thing I noticed is that these are Goodyear, which was uh, used back during the day um, they are a different style than what came on there in fact these were a one piece where that other one you remember had the uh, piece of leather up underneath it we won't need that piece of leather it'll just be a one piece also these are a little bit larger than the ones that came in so I'm having to try to finagle this to make sure that all these wind up in the boot and they don't overhang Some things to talk about. One is I was a little bummed, maybe because I'm used to working on, you know, uh, dress shoes and stuff about stitches being uh, parallel and all that. Well, it made me feel better because I found a picture of what appears to be an original online, and here it is. And the stitches were, like I said, it was mass produced for the war effort. These were ch trying to churn these things out by the, you know, the bushels, and. Uh, it made me feel a lot better about the stitches. Another thing that I was glad that I found on this picture was I can use the nail patterns uh, on the original to see, you know, well, what would it look like on the original? Now, another thing I noticed about those nail patterns, if you look over on the sides, 
you'll notice that there's like three and two. Now you shoe guys out there might recognize that's what shows up on a lot of things like floor shimes, the old vintage floor shimes, which makes me start to wonder, was that a coincidence or were some of these guys coming back from the war and start to make civilian shoes and then, you know, flashbacks to when these were made? I, I don't know, just uh, inquiring minds wanna know. So if y'all know about the history of um, floor shimes and the, the nails, let us know. Okay guys, these boots are done being, re they were done being resold. The uppers are in great shape. There's really nothing wrong with them. Um, so all I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of leather conditioner on there and let that soak in and buff it off. And then these boots will be complete. All right, so that does it. We've wrapped up this pair of World War II service boots. Trent, what do we do with these things? Okay, now, like I mentioned before, or Heath had mentioned earlier in the video, these again are replica boots, but they were extremely high quality replicas of uh, what you would have seen during uh, World War II for the US service members, or at least some of them. Yeah, I was, I was impressed. I figured that being a modern day, just for the hobby, There'd be a, you know, some cutting corners yeah. and, and maybe a little gimming in there. Definitely was um, Nails, but when I saw that the, the rant, well not the rant, but the, the back around the counter where it was lasted in was actually like carved and uh, stitched into the insole, yeah. that was impressive. Yeah, very impressive. Now, again, we put completely new insoles into these boots. The gentleman that sent them in wanted them fresh so that his foot could form to them. Uh, so we did that put on new, uh, new welts, uh, new soles. And then he, the owner sent us uh, authentic looking um, heel pads and half sole, like lug type half sole rubber. And um, it's kind of cool because yeah. they were stamped US Army. I don't, again, they were probably replica. Uh, I don't know for sure, but it, it was pretty neat. So we, we put th that all together and actually the bottoms of these boots when we got them from us actually looked better, I would say, than what the authentic ones would based upon this picture again. Um, we showed this picture earlier and you can see that the stitches were off a little bit. They put some nails um, in different places. Mm -hmm. And again, they were being turned out by the thousands back during World War II. So they did not have time for everything to be perfect. It was stitch it and get it out the door. And yeah. um, so I think ours looks a little more like the original than uh, what they did when they came in. Yeah. I feel better now. How about that? So anyways, uh, I think that's about all we did. Yep. Yeah. So nothing, nothing crazy, but it was cool being able to break open a pair of World War II boots and see what they look like. I love doing these old boots. I do too. We're going to have to get some uh, more historic boots in here again. It's always some of our favorite videos to do. Okay, guys, before you go, again, give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Subscribe to the channel. We are trying to hit 400,000 before... Yeah, the next, next several months. Uh, so help us get there, please. And uh, check us out again at potterandsons.com as well as our other company, southernpolish.com. And uh, we always appreciate your patronage. Okay, that just about does it. Till next time, y'all have a good one.